Hey everybody, this is Brody Dolanik from Brody's Garage. Today is September 2nd. This is episode 66. <music> Greetings everybody and welcome back. If you've been following along with my project here, it's been almost three years since I started this thing. I, uh, I can't believe it's taken this long. And at the same time, I'm about to face maybe my biggest struggle with this project and that is I'm almost out of things to do. Um, and what am I gonna do with my life after this is done? So today's September 2nd. On October 23rd, this will mark the three year anniversary from the day that a bare metal shell was dropped off on my driveway here. And I began this very, very <laughs> arduous journey here. I'm gonna spin the camera around, show you where we're at right now. And uh, here we go. Well, my friends, it has been a long, long time since I felt this good about a car, but um, here it is. Um, I just recently put the front end sheet metal back together, the front fenders, the hood, the grill, headlight bezels, bumper, bumper filler panel. Uh, it took me a long time to get to where I could do that because I was for a very long time working on the engine bay, which I'll show you in just a second, but I'm going to just give you a quick walk around the car right now to show you where we're at. So uh, yeah, it's starting to feel like I'm maybe nearing the end of this project. Um, I still have quite a bit to do, but I'm the type of person that likes to work with a deadline and I gave myself a deadline of October 23rd to get this thing done. And when I say done, I know that a, a car like this is never really done. There'll always be something to do. There'll always be something I'll look at and think I can improve upon that. But I'm, I'm talking about the basic essentials, getting it back together, getting it running and driving again. And I may have some detail work to finish up on it later, but for the most part, my goal is at the very least to get it running and driving back on the road by October 23rd. So um, I'm gonna pop the hood now and show you what's going on there. Ta-da! Okay, well, as you can see, um, we no longer have a chunk of bare metal here. We have some actual finished pieces here. It took me a long time and a lot of reconsidering to get this all worked out. It's a very tight, tight fit. Everything is just barely clearing in here. The engine had to be moved back and down to get the upper intake plenum to clear the hood. Um, I mean, just every single piece of this had to be made to fit. My inner fenders from TCI, what I ended up doing is I did a hybrid of sorts. I had these upper fender support braces from Speedway Motors. I think it's called their G-Comp series. I had these on the car before with no inner fenders. I ended up buying a second set of TCI sheet metal fenders from them. The first ones were scrapped a long time ago. Bought another set. Ultimately decided I did not like the design where this went over and came up to the fender. I thought this panel here was just a little bit too flimsy. So I like the more thicker, more sturdy uh, braces that I'm using here. And so I drilled holes and decided to mount it, which honestly, I like the look of that, sort of the riveted look, you know, the, uh, the stainless hardware against the matte finish uh, stuff here. I also cut out considerably around my turbochargers to get that to clear. And I made these little steel frames to go around to kind of strengthen it and also finish it off. I think it trims it off nicely. I did the same for the down tubes, which go down there on both sides. This one I messed up with and I didn't get my O2 sensor bung far enough down. So it's just rubbing on the back side. So I'm gonna have to open that up just a little bit further and make a new trim ring for that side. All of this stuff was recently powder coated from 6651 Customs. Thank you guys. The hot side of the turbo plumbing was all done in Cerakote. And that was, um, I'll put the name of the place down below. Thank you to those guys. So yeah, once I finally got the engine stuff back on, I got the inner fenders on, I mounted my power steering reservoir, the turbo plumbing, the radiator, my AC condenser, and I made all of my air conditioning lines, which is where we left off in the last episode. I have now since tightened everything up, 
O-ringed everything, vacuum tested it. It's holding vacuum. My cooling system, I, I did a vacuum check on that as well. And <laughs> I had this major suction going on. I was like, where is that air escaping from? Finally, I took some paper and ruffled it up and got it down. I saw that it was fluttering right down there in front of the water pump. And I'm like, what in the heck is going on? So this is a, a cast aluminum housing and there's a, a water pump that bolts into there with like, I think it's six volts. I think I must have had it indexed slightly off because I, I took all this apart to paint it a while back, satin black. And I guess I didn't have it back together the right way. So anyway, I took it all apart, had to pull all this back out, <laughs> gasket seal that, put it back together, vacuum checked everything again, and it's good. And the reason I had to vacuum test everything before I could put the fenders on and everything is because behind that inner fender there is my four-way bulkhead fitting. It's actually right about in there. My four-way bulkhead fitting for my AC and my heater hoses is all up in there. And so I wanted to make sure if there was any leaks, I was gonna get that sorted out before I put the sheet metal on. So that's good. Fenders are on before I stuck the fenders back on. I gave them a nice fresh coat of Raptor bed liner on the inside. My bumper has been painted on the back side to prevent any rust and contamination. My brackets, I did all that today. Bumper filler was just the other day, the grill. And all this stuff had overspray and junk on it. I've spent more time sanding, color sanding, polishing all this stuff out before I could even stick it back on the car. So hours and hours of time have been putting into just cleaning things back up before they go back on. But I gotta say, overall, I'm really, really digging the way this thing is turning out. I did all my brake lines over, starting from bare scratch. I ordered new stainless steel lines from Summit. Some of the ends were boogered up and I had to recut them and flare them anyway, so not a big deal. That's all been done. Now I also began putting on my stainless trim around the windows and doors here. So none of this was ever done before after the car was painted and then prior to paint, I really did very minimal test fitting of this stuff. I did sort of test fit my rear window stainless, which I'm glad I did because this had to be reshaped here, but there were no mounting holes for any of this stuff. So I had to get out a cutoff wheel and a small die grinder bit and make some slotted holes in the trim for the little retaining clip that goes in there. There are screws that hold this in. It had to be bent, manipulated every which way to get it all to fit, but it is on there now. The remaining items are I have to put my door, I'm sorry, my roof rail weather stripping in. And then I've got to get my vent windows in, which are somewhere right over there in those orange packages. I've got to mount my vent windows, my side glass, quarter glass, and right up there in a box from New Relics is my brand new power window motor regulators. So I haven't even messed with any of that stuff. Down there is a pile of OEM uh, channels, hardware. I've got boxes and boxes of new hardware and some used hardware. I've got to sort all this stuff out and test fit it and get it all to work. But I gotta say, I love the way the car is starting to look with the uh, the color of the Tangelo and the chrome trim. It's a little old school in this day and age. A lot of guys are going with the all blacked out wheels and Euro and monochromatic looks. This is a little bit of a throwback look and I, I still feel it's very relevant. It still looks cool and tough. I am gonna have tinted windows, of course, which will modernize it a little bit. But to me, the stance is just killing it right now. I've got those coilovers dropped down quite a bit. I think I've got good wheel clearance everywhere. Well, um, if I have to bring it up a little bit, I will, but otherwise I'm gonna try to keep it down in the ground like this. Okay, and so here's my big decision. I've decided that I'm not gonna do another episode until it's done. Why? Because the big reason is I want my final episode to be episode 67. It's a 67 Nova, and I'm gonna do this in 67 episodes. To me, that works out just beautifully. Um, so there's a lot to be done. I have to fill and bleed all of my cooling, air conditioning, brake systems. I've gotta get the gas tank flushed out, finish up the gas lines. I'm basically gonna do everything I can to get the car running again. I've gotta install all my battery cabling and electrical components, uh, the modules for the ECM, all the under the dash stuff, all the AC stuff. Um, I'm gonna get everything functional and get it working again by the next episode. And so I've given myself until October 23rd, that is I think around 50 days from today. 
somewhere in that ballpark. I, I stopped checking, but I'm gonna give myself a hard deadline. So I'm gonna ask you to come back for a very special episode 67 within the next 50 days, maybe even sooner, but no later than October 23rd will be my final episode of this car. So with that, I bid you all adieu. Good luck with your projects. I'm gonna get back to work.